My name's Andrew Green. I'm the head of design at Canva. And in this session, you'll be hearing from our incredible design team, consisting of Julia, who you met earlier, Carolyn, and Simone. Do you guys want to come up? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm really excited to be here today and give you a bit of a glimpse into how we design at Canva, which I believe and we believe will help you all build incredible apps. Let's start by getting to know Canva itself. And in fact, the very first task of any new designer at Canva is to do an audit. Now, we won't be asking app developers to do the same, but we want you to all spend time designing a presentation, social media design, or using the visual suite that we went through before. Play with the apps that are already out there. And you might observe some of the language that we use. Feel the way our UX flows. Take notice of the way our UI fits together to really bring it to life. And one thing that's really important is to really feel how a user flows from the home page into the editor. And when you're in the editor, make sure you pay particular attention to the side panel. That's the key place where all the app magic will be happening. And it's where your incredible app will live and where your users will be inspired, be creative, and help them hit their own goals. And by using Canva yourself every day, you'll understand how your app fits into the bigger picture. A bigger picture that includes a community of, yes, 135 million users strong every month. We love our community at Canva. They've grown because of Canva's famous simplicity and ease of use. And to get there, our design team holds an incredibly high bar for quality. We want everyone using Canva to experience that same ease of use, no matter what their goals are. So how do we maintain that high bar for quality? Well, we're heavily influenced by our design principles, which you'll hear a bit about today. And we want to shed a bit of light on that. We've never actually shared these before publicly, so we're, we're pretty excited to do that. These have been in, in the design team for many years uh, now, so we're going to share a few of them. And to help with that, actually, I might get Kara to help walk us through some of our principles. So at Canva, we have a set of principles that we use every day to guide our design decisions that's helped us create a product that is loved by our community. And so today we'll share a few of our favorites so that you can use it kind of like a North Star when designing your app. So let's dive into each and bring them to life, starting with great defaults. Great defaults. I love these animations, by the way, really bringing them to life on this beautiful screen. It's OK to have powerful options uh, available for our community, but if they don't tweak any settings or change any values, they should still end up with a great design. So make sure that any new feature that you've got is optimized to create a great design right out of the box. Our text effects are a really great example of this. We allow users to select their text and then apply effects. And even though we have some really seriously powerful text effects here, the defaults are immediately obvious, not to mention really gorgeous. And if a creator wants to tweak any of the values, for example, to create a drop shadow, it's easy for them to just get the right angle on that drop shadow just to make that drop pop. So great defaults also really lends itself well to this next principle, which is beginners become experts. Creators should always have a great first experience with your product, that's paramount. But they should also have an exciting time designing or using your app, whether it's their first time or their 10th or 100th. Take our guides feature, for example. Right off the bat here, you see we've added some great defaults in for our beginners. These preset options really ensure that their design stays neat and visually balanced no matter their skill level. But as they become more confident in their skills and in using Canva, we like to gradually hand over the reins of the design process to them. For example, by empowering them with, well, empowering our now experts with custom guide options so that they continue to push the boundaries of their design skills while ensuring things stay pixel perfect. So remember to consider how your app will cater to the appetite of both the new and the experienced. Now, next up is one of my favorites because it's so entwined into how Canva is so special, which is to create building blocks. So always default to freedom of expression over narrowly defined behavior. Our customers at Canva have so many goals. So giving them tools that can be flexible and adapt to their particular workflows is really preferable over shoehorning them into an ill-fitting solution. Because the entirety of Canva is thought about like this, your app will become a vital building block in the experience of millions of Canva users every day. A great example of this is our new brand hub. While we were giving our users the creative freedom to choose fonts, to choose colors, graphics, and so on, those building blocks come together to create a brand hub 
that empowers even non-designers to design on brand while still maintaining some creative freedom for them as well. So think about the building blocks of your app. How will they come together to form a cohesive experience? So creating building blocks is just as important as weighing up every line. Simplifying the number of unnecessary elements in your UI will always make your app and your product more clear. Help users cut through the noise and be more efficient. And be more effective by evaluating whether each box or button or feature needs to be shown on any given page, in any given moment, or whether it needs to be shown at all. In fact, our design system team here at Canva has been hard at work weighing up every line. Simplifying the many filter variations that were uncovered during one of those regular product audits and they've sweat every pixel and weighed up every line to deliver a consistent filter experience that will provide the most value with the least amount of complexity. All right, on to our next principle, Caro, which is one I love as well. Be fun and be responsible. So we want our community to feel a connection to the people who make Canva. This should be reflected in the tone of voice, the interface cues that we use to communicate with our community. So we're all humans, so let your human side show, but know when it's appropriate to be playful, and when to communicate more serious matters. An example of this is when a user uploads an image or a video to Canva, we have to provide a visual cue in the UI to make sure they know what's happening. We created a water flowing animation here, which felt about right. And then one of our clever engineers thought that this would also be a cool time to show a little rubber ducky floating along randomly. It was a small moment that showed our human side. Or the special gifts that we added to our homepage during Canva Create earlier this year. For this special occasion, we wanted to make our homepage feel like the holidays. So we wrapped up every feature release into a little gift that our community could open up and explore. It was a really fun way to introduce the features that we had, and most importantly, it was a great way to start to onboard the audience as well. Be fun, be responsible also especially applies to AI features that you're thinking about building. So when bringing the power of LLMs into Canva, we need to do so in a really responsible way. So for example, our community loves using our new AI-powered Magic Write feature. But when someone starts to move into murky territory, make sure you provide the right guardrails to help keep our creators on track and well-informed. So Magic Write is an obvious example of this principle, words are design, but it doesn't only apply to generative AI. What a user reads is just as important as what they see and interact with. You kind of only really notice how important words are to your app or your product, when they're gone. Without words in our editor, it would be impossible for our community to achieve their goals. Conversely, in this example, you can see how powerful words are and how we've used them to inspire our creators using Canva Docs to write visually beautiful content. We've added inspirational, encouraging quotes about getting started to really help build up their confidence and combat the anxiety of a blank page. So when designing your app, think about how you'll craft clear, concise, and meaningful language to help our community achieve their goals. For this next one, I'd like to invite Julia, our group design lead that you've seen before, to take us through our final principle. Thanks, yeah. Caroline. So yeah, our last principle really brings it all together into an experience that is just simple enough. We want to ensure that our features can be understood by any non-designer. That means no jargon and no dials that only a professional would understand. But it's important to remember that simple is not the opposite of powerful. Every feature in Canva is in fact a carefully crafted experience that helps our users achieve the same desired results, but with less clicks and less complexity. Take our gradients feature here as an example. In our first iterations, you'll notice that we added the most essential features, starting with the gradient type to a color selector and then a simple slider for direction. But we knew that our users wanted more, they were asking for more, and so we added in our top requested features from the additional color stops to even more advanced color features like the eyedropper you see over there, and even some more advanced tools like being able to have interactions and setting the gradients on the design itself. And while this is a lot more powerful, it is becoming a lot more complex. And so we challenge ourselves on how we can simplify this experience whilst still helping our users achieve the same desired results. We started by setting great defaults so that our beginners can really enjoy creating beautiful gradients in just a few seconds. We then added our style and color building blocks that really empower these first time designers to then become experts. Our end experience is now just simple enough. 
and yet it's powerful enough so that both beginners and experts can really create those beautiful custom gradients in Canva in just a few seconds. So there you have it, our seven key design principles that you can now apply when you are designing your next app. Oh, hey, it looks like a new app has just been submitted for review. Simone, can you help me? Yes, thank you, Julia. Uh, I think I might know this one, Francesco. That must be my brother from Italy. You should all know he's a developer by day and a pizza maker by night. Shall we take a look at the app, Julia? Let's take a look. Pizza pie AI chart. What, what, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it could be some data food AI related app. I really don't know, but I do like the icon. Uh, should we have a look at the app? Let's take a look, Simone. Okay, what's going on here? What's that label over there? Pizza what? And the three tabs, red, white, and barbecue? I don't know. I'm not sure either, Simone. I'm also a little confused by the select all. Um, the red outline is giving me, I guess, error vibes. A lot of error vibes there. Uh, what about the two sliders, those, those controls? What am I moving? The size and portion of what? Yeah, that is fair. Very confusing. <laughs> Placeholder, not sure what is going into that placeholder. I know it says topping, not quite sure what to put there either. The button experience here is highly broken in my opinion. What's, what's the primary call to action, a secondary, and we have an extra line, title, and divider. I think we need to help Francesco in some way. I think so too. <laughs> How about we apply the camera design principles? I think it's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Some great improvements. Now we apply words are designs and we have some meaningful labels, pizza base, and some great defaults, the red, the white, the barbecue. Yeah, I really do love how we've applied great defaults to this and being able to see a visual preview of what you're gonna get on the design is really helpful as well. What's next? Let's have a look. <laughs> okay, some more powerful controls. We apply beginners become expert and I do like the details on the pizza chart size, with the pixels. Agree. I really love beginners become experts as a principle here because it's striking a really great balance of being able to get started really quickly, understanding the sort of pizza bases you can apply, but then being able to have a few controls that allow you to make those tweaks and those adjustments and get the customizations you need. Okay, now I can see some great building blocks so users can start playing with your app. What else, Julia? Yeah, agree. <laughs> It's no longer saying placeholder. I love that it's saying make your topping. And yes, we've applied create building blocks here. Again, being able to quickly get started, knowing exactly what you can apply and with the building blocks. But what's that surprise me one, Simone? I think that's the fun part of the app, is how we can bring some delight into user experience. That does sound like a lot of fun. I do love a spontaneous pizza pie. And do we remember how broken the button experience was? Let's have a look how it's changed. This is a great improvement. We now know, we can see which one is a primary call to action, a secondary one. What else, Julia? Yeah, I, I can actually read what that <laughs> second button is saying now there. I really love that we've been able to weigh up every line here. We didn't need that extra divider line or that extra label. We are honing in now on just the two key primary actions that as users, we know exactly what we need to do. So yeah, I, I think that all of these changes are really awesome. Should we have a look at the whole experience all together? Let's take a look. All right. Wow, what a difference it has made to be able to apply the design principles to Francesco's app. Really loving that we were able to strike a really good balance here and that the end overall experience, as you can see, is now just simple enough. As a beginner, you can come into Francesco's app and very quickly be able to create a pizza pie in just a few seconds. But then we've also balanced that by really being selective about which controls and building blocks that we add into Francesco's app so that you can have those tweaks and customizations you need to make the perfect pizza pie for your design. I think this is great. And I think it's probably time for me to make a call to Francesco because I don't think he knows much about these design principles. <laughs> like Francesco, many developers we spoke to, they have no idea and they have the same problem. How can I build an app that follows these design principles while I'm making sure whatever I'm designing aligns with their Canva guideline. And we thought about this problem a fair bit, and I think we might find a solution. Can I guess drum roll, please? Introducing the App UI Kit. 
a library of React ready-made components that will help streamline the development and design of your app. From form field, a key component of the kit, to select one of the most requested components from the dev community, to file input which will allow your user to add that content into your app, buttons, and many more. The beautiful thing of the kit that it's been built using our design system, which means you get access to tested and optimized components. So whatever you're designing will fit within our guidelines. We also compress all our components into an NPM package. And in addition, the kit comes with some anti-versioning so you can stay in sync with any future changes. We think this is very exciting. It's just the beginning as we're planning to release more and more components in the coming months. And today also we have our tech lead, Viv, here, who help us to create the UI kit. Feel free to grab me and ask any question during our office hours. Thank you. All right. I'm really excited about that. And Viv is flew in this morning from, uh, from oh, Melbourne. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Great to see you here to help us with all the questions about the UI kit. I'm so excited about bringing this. It's going to make sure that all of the apps that we see are really in line and hopefully it speeds up the whole development process for all developers as well. So let's just kind of have a bit of a recap here and see how all of this will be put into action. So first, I talked about the importance of getting to know Canva. Before designing your app, play with Canva, use it every day, try to test it and push it so you really feel like you understand it before you start to build your app. Then we talked about how to apply our design principles to simplify your app and create experiences that our community will love and making it feel like your app is a part of Canva that our community actually expects. And then finally, we announced our new UI kit, which will help you save time and create really high quality UI. And putting all of these into action means that your app and will ensure that your app will become part of the Canva love that we see in our community every day. I'd like to just sort of end with one last thought from the design team, which is Canva was born from a dissatisfaction with complex design tools, as Mel mentioned this morning. We designed a radically new tool. It was one that couldn't have been imagined before. And now we can't wait for developers, builders, and dreamers to do the same, to unleash their imagination onto Canva's community. And we invite all of you to extend your creativity onto Canva's platform and build apps that actually take our UI to the next level. Thank you all. Thanks to the design team for coming up to here today. And thanks for everyone's attention.